Well, today I'm testing a few 120 millimeter fans. I've always relied on these Noctua NFA 12x25s for their versatility as both a static pressure fan and also an airflow oriented fan. Now, whether it's for a custom loop or an AIO, these are pretty much my go-to. But there's more to fans than tan and brand, so let's skip the touchy-feely and see what 120 millimeter fans make the most sense for water cooling. Hey, and welcome to Machines and More. I really like the 120 millimeter fan size for its versatility as both a case fan, heat sink fan, and also a radiator fan. It's just the right size, especially for small form factor builds. 92 millimeter fans slot in better to some builds, but on a noise normalized basis, they just don't move as much air. 140 millimeter fans are efficient, but their larger size makes them more difficult to slot it into small builds. And there just aren't as many options. I'm starting a series of radiator fan comparisons just to see if we can clinically hone in on which fans make the most sense. Primarily, this is geared towards folks that are choosing a fan for their custom loop or replacing their stock AIO fan. If you're using a radiator size that's in a multiple of 120 millimeters, then this comparison is for you. Primarily, this is a water cooling fan comparison. However, based uh, on the noise to RPM performance at 800 to 1000 RPM, you could make some inferences for the suitability of these fans as case fans. The fans in this first round are all 12 volt PWM, and I'll test Arctic's P12 PWM, the new Vardar EK Vardar X3M DRGB, Noctua's NF A12 by 25, the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 high speed, and I saw these lying around, so I threw in Cooler Master's Sickle Flow 120 millimeter DRGB. Now, originally I just wanted to check out this fan, but as I obsessively added more and more fans to test, that quickly got out of hand, and so here we are comparing five fans. For starters, let's look at the RPM ranges of these fans, as well as the manufacturer's CFM and static pressure ratings. Now, even though noise is given by the manufacturers, there's no indication how far they're measured at, so it could be all over the place. And I wouldn't take too much stock in that number. The new Vardar fan but does boast the highest RPM airflow and CFM rating. I'll give a brief rundown on each fan, and then let's dive right into the testing results. The Arctic P12 is a favorite amongst builders and that's due to its performance per dollar. It's gone up a bit in price over the last few years, but it's still a very good budget option due to its current $10 price. The design is simple. These come in black or translucent white. They're lightweight, no frills, and they don't come with any vibration inserts. And despite only having five very large fan blades, these things move a lot of air quietly. Now, EK's Vardar X3M is the original subject of this video, and it is a new design from the premium custom water cooling brand from Slovenia. And though in the past I haven't been too impressed with the Vardar line, I was eager to test it to see if it would be a good performer, especially since to me, it looks so interesting. I mean, this is one sharp looking fan. It's quite a hefty fan, about the same weight as the Noctua NFA 12. And this does have an unconventional design since it uses these massive rubber bumpers that connect to the frame via Allen screws. And because the bumpers are non-symmetrical, you'll also need to flip them if you're gonna change the orientation. A little bit of an inconvenience as I discovered, especially since it's an Allen screw and not just a Phillips where you can just grab a regular screwdriver. They also don't necessarily work with normal fan screws since the, the normal fan screws won't grip into the socket well. They include a special Allen screw and nut combo, so installation is a bit different if you're using these connected directly to the chassis. As a rad fan, you'll need to use the short screw to mount to the radiator. The long ones that come with your rads usually won't work because there's a, a big gap here. These are DRGB and you can daisy chain them. And there is a lower cost non-RGB option from EK. The user does also have an option to buy additional rubber bumpers in different colors, although they're not cheap at around $10 US for a pack of four. Noctua's NFA 12x25 is a reference product in my opinion, since this is the fan that 120 millimeter fans should be compared against. And no, before you get excited, they don't come in the cyberpunk version, at least not yet. 
Um, so I did take the liberty of taking some Chromax inserts to jazz them up a little bit. These are a true all-rounder and they work well as case fans, rad fans, and heatsink fans. But the strength of these fans comes from the low noise at equivalent RPMs to other fans, which means you can run these at a higher RPM without any noise penalty. The blade to flip frame clearance is low. They are quite efficient at moving lots of air as well. And the Sterox material of these blades are sturdy and the fan is heavy and well dampened. They are the highest priced fan at $30, but at the same time, they also come with a lot of extras such as a 30 centimeter extension cable, a low, low noise adapter, a wide splitter, anti-vibration mounts, and also a gasket, this guy here, for optimal performance while using these as a rad fan, which I will test these with. Be Quiet Pure Wings 2 High Speed is a higher RPM version of the Pure Wings 2 fan. And these are the stock ones on the Pure Loop AIO just reviewed on the channel. And I thought these would give a good baseline. They're quite simple, they're no frills, they don't feature any dampeners, but the fan is actually pretty well constructed with nine blades that feature noise reducing grooves. The fan is fairly value oriented at only about $11 US. Last but not least is the Cooler Master Sickle Flow 120 millimeter ARGB, which comes in at around $17 currently. Uh, this is an addressable RGB enabled version of Cooler Master Sickle Flow fans. Cooler Master uses these on their AIOs as case fans, also on their air coolers as a heatsink fan, so they are quite versatile, at least in the manufacturer's opinion as well. These come in black or white, and the RGB cables are also daisy chainable, so you can connect a whole bunch of these products together without needing a splitter cable. There are small vibration dampeners embedded or stuck to the frame. And even though it's a quite simple looking fan, otherwise it's generally well constructed. And the center of the fan features a holographic sticker. Performance wise, to start, let's take a look at the noise level at selected RPMs for two fans running at the same time. This will give us an indication as to the cooling performance of each fan when noise normalized, but it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story until we get the thermal performance. This is a fairly real world test for noise since I test in an open room where the noise floor is about 40 decibels. I tested the fans with a running AIO pump next to an open case, so the baseline level was about 41 decibels. At 800 RPM, all the fans feature the same noise levels. In other words, they don't add much to the noise floor. At above 800 RPM, that's when the differences start opening up. At the RPMs where I think most users will be interested in for water cooling, which is between 800 and 1500 RPM, Noctua's fan is consistently the quietest, uh, and the Arctic P12 is close behind. Now the real litmus test is thermal performance at noise normalized levels. Noise normalizing allows us to see which fan is the most effective given the operational penalty to the user, which is in the form of noise, right? Uh, the, in other words, if noise doesn't really matter to you, then you should just get the cheapest fan and run it at the max RPM. Having low noise while retaining good thermal performance would indicate a superior fan for water cooling. The test was done on an open air 240 millimeter pure loop AIO. The voltage and clock frequencies for the Ryzen 7 3700X was locked at 4.3 gigahertz for all cores and 1.25 volts, which consumes 90 watts during the blender render, which is a healthy, consistent, real world thermal load. Temps measured are the average of the final minute of CPU temps. Fan speeds were locked with a Corsair fan controller and though there are minor sample variations between two fans when they're used on a 240 millimeter radiator. The fan controller is able to adjust for that since I am able to specify the desired RPM and they are on separate channels. Results are adjusted to reflect an ambient room temp of 25 degrees C, which is kind of a middle ground between a cooler 20 degrees C room temp and warmer climates where you might see higher room temps. Just to set expectations, we are really in the territory of so-called hair splitting here, but we do have to separate them, even, even if it is by the proverbial hair. The range to hone in on is that one to three decibels above the noise floor, which is where it makes the most sense to run fans as typically past a certain RPM, you hit a point of diminishing returns. Now for water cooling, this would typically span the range of 800 to 1500 RPM for most fans. And we can see here that at 800 RPM, there's only a little bit separating the fans, but interestingly, the Cooler Master Sickle Flow is ahead. 
as noise increases to that 41.8 dBA points, so almost about a decibel above the noise floor, the Noctua does pull ahead and it stays in pole position for the remainder of the, its curve. Very interesting is the fact that the sickle flow is close behind, though that is the last time it checks in at such a high level of performance. Clearly, this fan is optimized at around 1000 RPM. Now, functionally speaking, there's little to choose from between the four at this noise level. At the RPMs where users might consider running a rad fan, which is from 1000 to 1500 RPM on the NFA 12, or at a penalty of about one to three decibels above the noise floor, this is where the Noctua is at its best, while the others are still fairly close. The X3M can hit the highest RPM, so its curve does extend beyond the others. You might have heard about airflow fans versus static pressure fans, with static pressure fans being recommended for radiators and heat sinks. So I stuck the Noctua S12A, a very much airflow optimized fan. And even though it wasn't terrible, it's a, and it's a great case fan, it's clearly not a good choice for a radiator fan. Plus it does top out an RPM fairly early. So that is just um, an example to show you why you would want something that's at least uh, a balanced or, or versatile fan as opposed to just an airflow fan. Uh, for a quick listen, let's compare the noise levels of each fan where users might be interested at 1200 RPM and 1500 RPM. An individual fan was attached to a free 120 millimeter custom loop rad just to ignore any radiator or pump noise. That Noctua is pretty quiet compared to the others, right? And that's where its strength lies. A few of these fans create some motor whine, which is fairly prevalent on the Sickle Flow and the Arctic P12. The Sickle Flows had very significant whine across the higher range of RPMs at about 1400 to 1800 RPM. Now, if you don't use the higher RPMs, it's not a big deal. At 1200 RPM, there's not really a noticeable whine, and definitely at case fan ranges, it's very quiet. Of particular note is the ubiquitous growl or howl as some have described it on this P12. Uh, this particular P12 hit peak whine at about 1200 RPM. And from what I've seen from other users, this point really varies. Uh, particularly noticeable is when these fans are ramping up or down in that range. So take a listen for that growl. So unfortunately, this is a bit of an inconvenience if you plan on using it as a water cooling fan. If you can, the easiest way to mitigate this is just to lock the fan at a fixed RPM, say 1150 or something outside whatever range causes the growl. Now it's really more the change in RPM that causes it. So if you can fix the RPM, then this fan is definitely serviceable. For a final discussion, let's start with the Be Quiet Pure Wings 2. If your AIO comes with it, so if you've got a pure loop, I wouldn't go ahead and replace it, but at the same time, I wouldn't recommend to go and buy one of these to use as a radiator fan. It's not a bad fan, but it's very average. Although it really isn't priced high for what it delivers. Now, as a case fan, this is excellent too. The X3M is a good fan and left a better impression than some of EK's other fans, but at best, it was on par with the other fans and functionally it was equal to the others in the RPM ranges that mattered. It's not a cheap fan either, 
like most of EK's offerings and almost matching knock to a level in pricing. To me, this one squarely wins in the looks department. Um, it's got RGB, it's got an aggressive look to it, but the non-standard mounting solution and the Allen key mounting of the vibration dampeners was really inconvenient. And this, I think, would be a very good choice for a high-end custom loop where you really want a good-looking fan and price isn't a huge consideration. Um, and yeah, I think that really would be a, a looker in that build. And I'll be honest, I wasn't really gonna test the sickle flow because this fan was squarely in the realm of very average fan in my mind. Uh, but from the results, it's clearly capable, especially at the lower RPM range, uh, where noise isn't a huge differentiator. In fact, at 800 RPM, this was interestingly the best fan tested. If you just want an RGB fan upgrade for your AIO and you can stay out of the high RPM range, then absolutely, this is a great replacement fan. It may even be a slight upgrade. I wouldn't really run this at the for a higher end custom loop, but then again, if you have lots of rads, and you can keep the fans to 800 RPM, there is really no argument to spend a bunch of cash on fans that don't offer too much more performance. And I was really impressed. Uh, they're not outrageously priced while offering fairly good looking DRGB. Certainly this is also a case fan uh, choice if you can keep it locked to 800 or 1000 RPM. As far as budget picks go, this P12 is squarely the champ in that department. It's able to mix it up with a higher cost, X3M for a fraction of the cost, and the only caveat being that P12 Howl. If you're looking for a cheap performance upgrade over your stock AIO fan, this is a guaranteed win. So that leaves the Noctua. For how much this fan costs, it better be good. And on a performance basis, it absolutely does not disappoint. The fan has a pleasing noise pattern, no strange noises at any RPM, no whine, and I think just the sheer number of extras that you get with a fan can help justify the price a bit. In the looks department, tan and brown is totally subjective, but I don't think there's much argument against its performance in that 1000 RPM plus range where things really matter. A lot was fun. Totally not the direction of this video originally, but that's the way things go sometimes, right? So that'll wrap up this first round. If you have a favorite fan you'd like tested, let me know. I'll be doing a part two next year and I'd love some suggestions. I am thinking to test some budget Noctua's, Corsair fans, higher end Cooler Master fans. So if you have any other suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Big thanks for watching today and I'll see you soon.